Now here's something I like to do too while I'm at this point is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just turn the motor over and kind of watch things work. You're going to see these are going to move up and down here. Okay, we already said our intake was the silver one, right? Yep. So we, we want to set this at top dead center compression to be able to put our rocker box assembly on. So this is what you guys are going to do. You're going to watch the intake open and close. Then you're going to get in here with the flashlight and you're going to verify when the piston is at top dead center. About right there. They should be equal. Does that make sense? Yep. And then ideally we could keep on moving forward. So to do that, next we've got a more gaskets and some O rings. We talked about this on disassembly, but I'm just gonna, you know, reinforce it here. See it says front head? Yep. Okay, but if I just flip it around, it's a universal gasket, it's on the rear. So what we're really doing is matching this channel up. I'll go ahead and tip the motor. Can you see the pathway here? Yep. Now that's part of the breather system. We'll, we'll keep talking about that here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just we'll keep on doing this here. All right, we just moved this in a better position for the viewers so that you can see this channel that I was talking about. I'm going to go ahead and put this on wrong. You know, we learn a lot from doing that. You can see where that's all exposed. And that oil would puke right down into the middle of the cylinder head there, but on the outside of the engine. So, not good. All these holes need to be thoroughly clean. No Loctite left in them. All right, uh, as we install our rockers here, going to the service manual, we saw that these fasteners uh, require a blue Loctite 243. The bottom of our rocker also needs to be cleaned as well. That's simply going to slip into place here. Now you'll notice how much this can move around. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us to put all the bolts in there um, as we do this. Okay, as I just kind of continue getting my stuff set in place here, you're gonna see on my rocker support here that I'm just basically starting to set stuff in here to line it up nice. I can go ahead and start putting these six bolts in. I've got two bolts of one and four of another. I'm gonna model this real quick here to show you when they're correct, you'll notice that they have about the same amount of exposed threads. We've talked about that a lot, right? Yep. Let me go ahead and flip these, okay? You see it's just grossly wrong here, right? Yep. But if a technician did start to put this in, do you see where they could grab a couple of threads? Mm -hmm. yep. They're going to grab a couple of threads. If they torque that, what's going to happen? Strip holes. Okay. What I'm going to do is just get these to line up with the gasket here. A couple points here on the rocker assemblies. We didn't spend much time on this on disassembly. So you can see where there's a, uh, you know, a ball socket here for the push rod to roll on. Nice? Yep. Yep. Okay, and you can see on the other side where this just flat, that's going to push off of there. So like with anything else, we've got a bunch of lube on here, but there's something I want you to notice about this pin. Is you see where it's notched? Yep. Okay, this is a really cool, simple design. I'm just going to, like I said, all this stuff is just sitting on here loose, good and lubed up. But what that pin's for is this bolt. So that's what stops it from rotating. Pretty simple? Yeah. Go ahead and just kind of slip this through here. And what I need to do is I need to line that notch up ready for that bolt, okay? If I'm not intentional when I push this in, sometimes this guy can be a bugger because you can't, there's nothing to grab it and spin it, so you end up having to do all the work of taking it back out. So you go ahead and just kind of line that up loosely. I stick my bolt in there, just give it a little wiggle. Remember, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things right now. I'm really lining all this gasket up as well. And I'll take my front bolt and I. Talk about the breather assembly here a little bit for the twin cam. A little similar but different than we had on the Evos, so it's it's worth addressing here. So like got a little piece of junk to clean up there. Got some new gaskets, of course, no big surprise. But underneath there, you're gonna have you know this sponge, if you will, that what's gonna happen is hopefully that oil hits that, and we're still hoping that the oil is gonna stay down and drain back down into the engine. Okay? If it does get through here, 
what we're hoping is that the very last thing that just gets through here is literally going to be air. So air will come through here, circulate through, and there's just always going to be some oil that's, you know, going to go with it. So we hope it's going to, you know, still change direction and drain back. But ideally, this passage here, then the air, which you hopefully is just down to air, will go through this hole. Now let's go back down to the engine here. So just kind of seeing how this goes through, you can see that the air comes, the air and oil, okay, are going through here. They're going to be stopped by the sponge, if you will, okay? And then the, the, the air that gets through goes through here. It has to go somewhere, right? Yeah. Because what's the air getting pushed by? What's, what's creating all this air? Well, piston. Piston. What about the piston? The piston's moving what direction? Coming down the cylinder. It's coming down. It takes all that pressure in the crankcase. It has to go somewhere. So what you'll see, I'll just go ahead and start setting this up. Obviously, I want a gasket to seal it. I want to put this in place. And now, when that air goes through here, it's going to be capped off, and then it's going to go through here, and then that ultimately comes out here. Remember that channel we were blocking off with the rocker gasket? Yep. That's what's sealing all this, and then it goes from here. It goes to the air filter, through the air filter, so now it's, it's captured, and then ran back through the engine. Make a sense? Yep. yep. have to install this at this point. I like to though, because what I like is for everything on here to just be, you know, loose like this. Now here's what I'm going to be able, this is what I'm able to do at this point. And I made a big deal about this in our Evo videos because of the three-piece design. The older Sportsters, same thing of a three-piece design. Your guys' as newer Sporties, this isn't such a big deal. But when I could take this and, like if I push it all the way here, I'm going to have the biggest gap here and, and no gap over here. What I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to see if there's any cosmetic value in, in this. Do you get what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. Now, on, I'm telling you, on this engine, this doesn't matter. This is muscle memory from doing Evos. But why not just put it in the middle? Does that make sense? Where there's really no tension on it all the way around. So I'm going to try and keep a nice straight line all the way around here. If you do this when it doesn't matter and you're just doing it by muscle memory, you're going to do it when it does? Yep. Absolutely. So I think that taking some pride in your work is, is just a great thing. All right, here's another bit of uh, that motivation to get you to think about um, the quality that you produce. I know this is just a small thing that I'm pointing out here, but it just adds some really pleasing cosmetic value. I've seen some rocker boxes, especially on the three-piece designs, that some people are bothered by the fact that if they don't have a smooth line across them or that they don't look even. Uh, they look like a set of stairs because they're so out of place. So just pay attention to what you're doing and put some pride behind it. So I'm going to just get a bolt snug here, a couple of them. And now I can uh, go ahead and start to uh, tighten up some of the rest of these. If you guys notice how on the rocker you can use an Allen or a, this one is a uh, 7 16th. Yep. yep. I'm going to turn this down. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to see that there's a gap in here. Okay, It's small now. It kissed up a little. Actually, let me, let me show something here. By me just kissing those down, I can push this and it's got a little bit of springing action. Since I can push on this, it's kind of spongy and it won't just sit down on its own. You can actually even hear the clunk in there. Mm -hmm. That's because there's oil in the lifter. Now this is what's supposed to be happening. This is really super small. There's, there's not a ton of pressure on this. If you had the motor in the wrong position, say you had that push rod up and you went in here and just started tightening this down, you will actually open the valve because it can't bleed the oil up, oil up fast enough and that valve is going to hit what? Piston. It's going to hit the piston. So anytime you're doing this, once again, just like a, you know, a quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, just keep, you know, back and forth. None of the rest of these are affected right now at this point. It's just these uh, larger diameter fasteners here and then all of a sudden you're going to realize that you're you're kissed you're metal to metal and now I could just go straight into a torque spec and there's nothing that's going to go wrong before I'd ever switch the motor over if we hadn't been if we hadn't you know
this been a class engine or whatnot, we wouldn't even have our clips on, okay, on our push rod tubes because what we would do is we would take and verify that you can spin the push rod by hand before we turn the motor over. And you guys in your sporties, they have that solid push rod. We don't have that capability anymore, so it's really important to follow this procedure. If I, if I have to work at all to bring this down, I wouldn't even torque it. What I would do is I would quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. I would keep kissing it down, walk away from it for 20 minutes. Go work on something else. Do your paperwork. Uh, make sure your parts are on there. Do anything else. Then come back and unkiss it and it start to do that process again. And if you don't have to work, does that mean the lifters are bled down? Yep. If you still have to work, the lifter still didn't bleed down. Put some tension on it just a little bit, walk away again for another 10, 15 minutes, and keep coming back to it. You cannot do anything until those lifters are all the way bled down. Make sense? So I broke it up in a couple steps. I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and torque these in the pattern. It's uh, 120 to 168 inch pounds in a pattern. You can see here we just uh, wrote it out to, to copy the service manual and not get it dirty. Our breather one, you can see that's still loose. Yes, yeah. my wrench here. Let's go 110 on this here. To button this up, obviously we got a gasket here, and I want to show you here that this needs to go on one way. Can you see the shape right here? Yeah. Where that's, you know, matches this and so on. If you take this, believe it or not, you could put the dang thing on wrong. Doesn't that suck? Do you see where oil would just puke out these? Yeah. Okay, so attention to detail is, is going to be crucial on this to make sure that you install that right. Now, I know that I could take and also go ahead and rotate this motor because do you see how I can wiggle that? Yep. Okay, I can wiggle this one. Yep. What's that tell me about the push rods? They're loose. I wanted to leave this clip in here in slow motion. You can see what I'm doing is I'm wiggling the rockers to verify there's no tension on the push rods for full torque and assembly. Most people would have the push rod tube covers still off at this point and then could spin the push rods freely as per the service manual. This works really well though. Because they're loose, because watch this. Let me go ahead and prove this. I'm going to go ahead here and watch them work. Now that this one is being moved here, you see how I can't wiggle it? Yep. I got a problem. That means that that would be under tension and I would not want to keep torquing and tightening stuff down or whatnot. So what we want is we want to, I'm going to go ahead and open the intake. We know the piston's up. If I can wiggle these, boom, I could cover this baby up. I don't need to worry about looking at the push rods and then I could set the next cylinder. I've only got six fasteners on here. see here is how much this moves around there's no dowel pins and so I want to make a point like we do on our Evos here you can see how long how long this is versus how short same thing as before if you're doing that something's wrong hmm. you've got the wrong faster in and then what I like to do is just verify that we're through You'll see here that if I take the time to square this up, I can fill this with my fingernail. If I take and make it nice and even and cosmetically appealing, I can just sit and kiss this here.
as you can see here, the lifters are not bled down. There's still a little tension on there, so caution must be used. Watch it kiss down right now. See, it just pulls down all nice and even. Until that lifter bleeds down, that's actually opening that valve into the cylinder. If you went far enough and had it in the wrong position, that valve would kiss the piston. That'd be a bad day. I'm checking my lifters. They're tight, so they're not bled down, so walk away. Here I'm just wrapping up the cam cover, nothing special about no dowel pins, uh, just absolutely 90 to 120 inch pounds and get ready to uh, put her back in a bike.